Okay. 15 minutes delay, it's more or less on time here in Spain. Good morning and welcome to Universidad Politécnica de Madrid. Welcome to the Civil Engineering School. Bienvenidos, bienvenidas a la Escuela de Ingenieros de Caminos, Canales y Puertos de Madrid. First of all, thank you for being here with us today. This is a very special day for us as we will be hosting the first on-site event of the first edition of the Master in Digital Twins to the, during the three next, next days. We are glad to be supported by representatives of our fellow travelers in this challenging journey, like the Col de Pont de Paris, BME from Budapest and Technical University of Istanbul. Thank you also to our Vice Rector. Muchas gracias, Asun, for being here. Thank you to all the speakers. Thank you to our EU officer, Gabriel Risola, for your support during these couple of years. And a very special welcome to all the students of the first edition of the Master in Digital Twins for Infrastructures and Cities. This school was founded 222 years ago. And since then, it has been the heart of the Spanish construction companies. To be so, our identity has always been to try to respond to their needs to anticipate the skills needed for the civil, for the future civil engineers. And this master is a clear example of that. We have sometimes wondered if our project, the master and in general, our bet for the digital twins, didn't come up too early. While most of our sector is struggling to get adapted to the BIM impositions, to the BIM impositions. After one year of the project and being half time of the master, we are more convinced than ever that it was the right decision at the right moment and that it has also been the right decision for the learners. We know that we are training leaders of the technology to be consolidated in five, seven years, a next step forward the digitalization of the sector. It goes alongside with the solid support of the European Union the change in the digital requirements of the public tenders, and more importantly, the evolution of technology and the computing capacity. We also know that the industry has a shared vision, which is part of the reason of the unanimous support that we have found in them. And that one of our key pillars for the success of their competitiveness is this new era, in this new era is hiring and training skilled professionals. And as you know, you can always count on us with us, come with us in this kind of matters. We really hope that you enjoy today's morning session. We will have the pleasure to learn from very well respected professor and industry professionals of different areas of technology related to digital twins. First, Asun, member of our Royal Academy of the Language of the Spanish language, will illuminate on us on the impact of AI and ontology. Eduard Loscos, Loscos will dissert on the different initiatives in place around normalization and standardization of the digital models and twins in the, the built-in environment. And Tyres and Ineco will also show us examples and cases of use of the application of AI and digital twins to the industry. Thank you all for helping us. That is all from my side. Let me just give the floor to Matthew Arquie, Professor of Ecole de Pont de Paris and Director of the Master of Digital Twins. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Rosé Miguel, for the introduction. Uh, dear colleagues, faculty members, learners, everyone, so good morning and thank you for attending this first event in Madrid. So I'll be brief. I just wanted to start with a little anecdote. Um, nearly one year ago, uh, I was at Ecole des Ponts. And uh, before I was uh, academic director of the master program, I was teaching every week at Ecole des Ponts and witnessed some colleagues at Ecole des Ponts. And uh, he was working with other people from Madrid, Budapest, Turkey, and Bucharest. And they were challenged to deliver a new master program, a brand new master program on digital twins for infrastructure and cities. 89 ECTS credits, 27 different courses, more than 70 teachers, a series of conferences every two weeks, 
free on-site events and the capstone projects. The task was huge. And I didn't think it could be possible to achieve that in such short notice. But they did it. They did it. After several months of hard work, they did it. Then, so after missing all that fun designing the master, I was appointed academic director last summer. We had our inaugural class last October. And after four months of intense courses, we are finally here together in Madrid. And as academic director, you can't imagine how pleased I am to be here with you all today for the next three days. Hence, first of all, I want to take this moment to thank again all the faculty members who worked tirelessly to deliver this master program. And with a special attention, of course, to UPM faculty members and Caminos for hosting us right now for the next three days. Obviously, I also have a special thanks to all our 19 different learners. Whether you are able to make it with us today, uh, or you are maybe um, for the one who can't uh, seeing us online, uh, you trusted us by joining this first cohort. Not only have you demonstrated a lot of motivation and interest in the subject during the past few months, but you also managed to do so while continuing to work in your respective companies. And we know it has been very, very challenging for you. So I really want to congratulate you again for reaching the second milestone of our program. Thank you a lot. Regarding our event for the next three days, we will dive deeper into digital twins world, deployment, some applications, with different lectures, workshops, and with the official launch of the Capstone projects tomorrow. And I take also this opportunity to thank all the mentors who also decided to be involved in this adventure. And some of them are already with us today. We will also have some informal moments between all these activities to exchange more casually between our work experiences and all the remarks you surely have on the master. As we already told you, your insight and feedback are key to improving the upcoming next terms of courses and more generally the next edition of the master programs. So please, take advantage of these three days to widen your knowledge of digital twins, uh, of course, but also to exchange ideas between us, to establish new concrete connection. Because after all, even for an online master on the digital transformation of the cities and civil engineering with Zoom session, virtual machine, chat GPT for some time to times, and 3D modeling. I guess we can still agree on one thing, like gathering physically from time to time, face to face in 3D, is the best way to strengthen all our relationships. Thanks again for joining us for the next three days. Enjoy the event. Thank you very much. And now, I give the floor to Nacho. Yeah. OK. Hello. Good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to introduce Professor Asuncion Gomez Perez to you. Uh, Asun is an outstanding professor at UPM. And being professor, you know that this means that you are a teacher, you are a scientist, you are a manager, you are a bookkeeper, you are a sales agent, and you are a volunteer. Many things that may cause frustration for normal or common human beings, but I think this is not at all the case of Asun. I'm going to give just three examples. I knew her for the first time as a manager, but not as an usual manager. She's the Vice Rector for Research, Innovation and Doctoral Studies of UPM. UPM is one of the largest public universities in Spain with more than 200 years of history and tradition and complexity. And we are, in fact, we are the first university in number of patents, the first university in Spain in number of uh, in European funding, and of course, this is the result of a collective effort of a lot of people. But for sure, having an excellent vice rector like Asun has done in the last seven years is, uh, is, is, is incredible. But uh, she's handled this so good, so well, because she knows very well what research is. Because she's also an outstanding researcher. And this is the reason why she's here today. She studied informatics, and she went to uh, Stanford. And then she came back and founded a research group on uh, artificial intelligence and ontologies. 
it doesn't matter what metrics you want to use, number of articles, number of citations, number of research projects, international co collaboration, whatever you want, uh, points out that Asun is one of the very best researchers of UPM, of Spain, and of the world. And I don't know, Asun, what you are going to tell today, but maybe uh, if artificial intelligence is going to uh, surpass uh, or, uh, or is about to surpass human intelligence, but I can assure that in the case of Asun, this is going to be really hard for the machines. <laughs> but last but not least, there is a, a huge honor. She, ha she has received many prizes and recognition, but she was recently appointed as member of the Spanish Royal Academy of the Language. Spanish is one of the most spoken languages in the world, and this is one of the most reputed institutions in the country. She is one of the very few female members of this academy, and she is the first scientist in its history. Uh, she's holding the Q chair, a small Q chair, because the chairs are named as the letters of the alphabet. I don't know if this was intentional or it was a, a serendipity, because, yes, here in Spain and in many parts of the world, not in France, but the keyboards of the, uh, starts with letter Q, and she's holding letter Q. And she's there not because the academy wants to just to try multidisciplinarity, but because they are aware that artificial intelligence is going to disrupt the, the evolution of the Spanish language and all the languages, because machines are starting to talk, and they are talking better every day. And also because they see the opportunity of the artificial intelligence to support their, uh, their mission as an academy. So, Asun, thank you very much for having accepted to deliver this lesson, but before giving you the floor, I want to say a last word for the audience. I hope that you are enjoying and with the master program and that you are learning a lot. And I hope that you will be the leaders of the digitalization of civil engineering because we, as the Royal Academy of the Language, we understand that the future has to be digital. And if you succeed in many years from now, maybe you can look back in time and please remember this precise instant in time because when somebody will ask you how you did that, you could say, okay, I did, that, I did that because I could see farther. And I saw farther because I was standing on the shoulder of giants. Please believe me that Asun is one of the giants that you are going to cross in your lives. Thank you. Okay, good morning everyone. And Nacho, thank you a lot for, for this really outstanding presentation of myself. So, so it's a, bit, a big responsibility to talk now here based on, on, on that. Okay, I'm going to talk about artificial intelligence in, in digital twins. And uh, let's say the, the setting is, is the following. We have the, the physical world, and, and there we, are, we have processes, we have objects, and also we have a lot of interconnected, interconnected systems that exchange a lot of data between, between them. And we want to move them into the digital world. And, and this implies that everything is based on zeros and, and one, which is the language being used by the, the computer. So, so, so in this setting, I mean, we, we are collecting a lot of, lot of data from, from, from these uh, objects and, and processes and interconnected systems. And we need to create models to represent the, the the, the data that, that we collect and then to represent the objects. We need to manage the data. We need to integrate and, and, and uh, the data coming from different systems. This means that we, we need to then to, to make them interoperable. We need also to, to make data governance in the sense that some data could be public, other data could be closed. Some data could be sometimes open, sometimes closed. and with the data, we can, of course, make analytics, reasoning, making decisions, and, and learning. And, and artificial intelligence is in, in most of these, of these processes. So the goal of this talk is to, to explore a bit where data came from, what does AI, AI do with this data, and uh, what is allowed to do with the data, because we cannot do with the data whatever we, we want. So, so in this world of digital data, we, we have different type of providers. So we have uh, city halls, we have governments, we have a lot of devices connected into, 
the Internet of Things. We have a lot of software and programs that are providing the digital, the digital print and, 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 um, and, uh, um, and, and allow us, and, and, and these digital systems trace everything we do in, in Internet. And, and, and of course, we, we have a lot of information that we put in social media. Of course, the data come from, from different domains, and the main problem is that the data comes in, in heterogeneous format. I mean, let's say we have Excel files, we have databases, we have uh, words, we have uh, mm, an, uh, mm, test, we have information on the map, com data coming from, from sensors, and so on and so forth. And of course, an additional problem is the data is in, in goes beyond English language, so we have data in all our languages, and, and, and then we need to take care of privacy and also the, the, the licenses. And, and uh, this is what is happening when, when we do systems related with, 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 da with data, and in the case of also of digital twins. So, so here you can see, I mean, if, if you are not from Madrid, you can see on this picture some beautiful places from, from, uh, from Madrid. And uh, these are objects in the cities. And uh, the, these objects, the palace, the Retiro Park, the, the hospital, the, the museum, the Santiago Bernabeu, and, uh, and, and the buses, I mean, all of them have sensors who are monitoring many different parameters in the, in the building. And, but there are also some kind of digital twins in, in, in the city because all of them, they, they are taking the, the data. And uh, this data uh, has some kind of characteristics, and it, this is taken from the data spaces promoted by the European Commission, and, uh, and, and we need to take care of the data sovereignty and also transparency we need to interconnect the, the data and to make them interoperable at the, at the semantic level, which means that all of us, we understand, or all the programs understand the same about a particular data. It is important to mention that sometimes we have different sources that are providing the data, and many times the value of the data is not the same, and, and, and also, sometimes, the, the data are overlapping. So we are dealing with problems like incompleteness, sometimes, other times, redundancy of the data, and, and, uh, and other times, uh, complementarity on, on, on the data. And what is art doing the artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is aggregating the data, connecting the data, verifying the consistency of the, the data, making decisions, reasoning with the data, and learning from, from data, okay? So, 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 so this, is the, this is the setting in which we, we are. When, when, when we are talking about buildings and sustainable cities, I mean, one of the, the aspects is, is mobility. And, and, and all of us, we, we know that we have the sustainable development Goals that at some point in, in this context appear, in, in, in this context appear, and when we are talking about let's say uh, mobility, we are talking about car sharing, uh, ride sharing, smart parkings, bike sharing, and so on and so forth. And we also have the in real time the the, the schedules of the of the, of the buses and the and also trains, and so on and so forth. Okay, so so. The, which one is the, the problem? The problem is that if we are analyzing this uh, mobility domain, so we are talking about complementarity, because uh, I mean the, the user could think on taking the bus or taking the train or taking the, the, the metro. We are talking also about information uh, silos in the sense that every provider has his own data inside in its systems, but most of the time they don't share the data. They are not aggregated in, in an unified uh, portal, for instance. Also, the data comes in, in heterogeneous formats because they are depending on the, on the uh, for instance, on the, on the sensors or on the language 
being used or in the format being used by, by the company. Also, we could have heterogeneous model, models. So think on time. Are we representing time using the, the British mm, format or, or the, 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 the format we, we are using here in Spain? Also heterogeneous ad access and also heterogeneous languages. So, so in order to make these objects in the digital world in, interoper interoperable, we need to solve many problems related with uh, heterogeneity, language heterogeneity at, at the, from the human perspective, language heterogeneity from the, the, the machine perspective, and also the, the, the heterogeneity in the, in the semantics, in what the data means. So th this is a very trivial example. So, so, so suppose that we have a camera that observes uh, the, the speed of the car, and, uh, and uh, the camera is observing, the data is 35 kilometers per hour, and the semantics is related with the car and the number and the unit of measure, okay? So from, from something the, that, that we read, we need an object, which is a car, we have a property, which is a speed, we have a value, which is 35, and we have a unit of measure, which is 35 kilometers per hour. And the same if it is observing another, another car. So, but, but which one is the problem? The, the problem is that we have many different devices doing, um, taking the measure. So, so, so we have the camera, we have also inside the car that we could say, if it is not digital or digital, that the speed of the car is 36 kilometers per hour. If we have the sensor on the wheel, the wheel would say that it is 35 kilometers per hour, or if the, we have a sensor on, on the road, the speed could be 33 kilometers per for, 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 for hour. So, so which one is the real speed of, of, of the car? And, uh, and also the, 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 the the, the, the measures that we take refers to different things. Because we can say that if we have only one car, we can say that that car has a speed. And, uh, uh, sorry, and uh, this is duplicated, sorry. We can say that the car in the blue area has a speed of 36 kilometer per hour. So, so we, I, I need sometimes to represent the topology and the geometry of where the, the object is. And, and, and for that, I need a property which is named contains in order to say that the, the car is in, inside a particular, in, in a particular area. And if in this area I have another, another car in the blue area, I need to say that this is a different object, okay? And I need to identify the, 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 the new car. And, and additionally, I could include more and more data saying that there is no accident, there is low pollution, or there is no traffic jump in the blue, in the blue area. So, 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 so we can complicate a lot the, the example in the sense that, that we, can have, we can have hundreds of sensors taking um, different, different data. So if, if we move into, into another domain, uh, let's suppose that 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 I, I, I want that I am now in, in a city when I have different type of buildings for for any of them I, I could uh, uh, indoor or, out, or outdoor I could measure the noise the air quality the temp the temperature the humidity the precipitation so on and so forth so let's say different parameters in, in the green zones we can also measure the environmental condition the soil conditions we can also see how we use the different spaces, okay? And how people moved in, in parks or on the street. And uh, in parkings, we can have uh, cameras. We, we can analyze the parking occupancy, the trajectory of cars. I mean, let's say we, we can measure ev everything that we have in the, in the real world. But, but the, the point here is that in addition to measuring things of physical objects, we need to go when we are talking about digital twins about how we integrate the data, including the data provided by, by people, because at the end, we are also, let's say, we are physical objects in the real world, and we are also uh, digital 
objects because we are providing a lot of information. So, so, so this implies that we, we, we need to go beyond the, the data that are coming from, from the physical, but and we need to go also into the data provided by the biological who are, who, who are we. And, uh, and, and, and this implies that we need to analyze how people behave, how people are organized, and uh, social relations of also of, of, of people in, in, the, in the digital twin sphere. But, but in, in addition to, to the data, we cannot forget about the metadata. Let me explain. If, if I say uh, it is 37 degrees, 37 degrees implies that could be the physical temperature, it could be the outdoor temperature, it could be the inside temperature of the building, it could be an angle, all of, all of us, we are engineers, it could be uh, the temperature of, of a liquid in a chemical lab. So, 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 so the number itself of 37 means nothing, okay? So, so we need to provide a lot of metadata, which are the data about the data, in order to say how I got the data, with which device, if it is not numerical, in which language, who are the licenses of, of, of the data, which one is the geolocation of, of, of the data, and, and also the space and, and temporal information, okay? So, so, so if, if we are building these digital twins, we cannot invent the terminology. I mean, we, I, I, cannot, I cannot express what is a sensor using my own vocabulary in Spanish or in French or, or in another language. I mean, we need to agree in a common model for representing the information that we get from the, the, the devices, okay? And for that, the consortium of the World Wide Web, which is named the W3C Consortium, provides vocabularies for representing all these dimensions, okay? So, so and if all of us, we use the, the same vocabulary, we can understand each other. And uh, in the case of digital twins, the different applications and the different systems can talk with each other, okay? If they use the same vocabulary and they use the same language and if, if they use the same syntax. But the, the data spectrum that we have goes from closed data, let's say financial information, or, or closed data that the different governments have or city, city halls have, the, the national security data to open data that the, the open data, like the timetable of the buses or, or, or trains. And in the middle, we have some data that sometimes could be open and sometimes could be closed, okay? Depending on, on the permission. So uh, we also have big data, we also have small data, we have governmental data, we have commercial data, we have personal data, okay? So, so, so the spectrum is really, is really wide and, and, and we have, in addition, the multilingual aspect on, on that. There is something which is the, the open data stars, that it is something in order to facilitate this change of, of, of data. And this was created by, this, this nomenclature was created by Tim Berners-Lee. So we, we say that one data has one star if we put the data on the web, okay? We say that the data has two stars if we put the data in a Excel format. The data has three stars if we use non-proprietary formats for exchanging the data between organizations. So instead of using an Excel, we can use a, a CCV uh, file. 
and we have a four stars, uh, a four stars data if we identify URIs, which are a kind of URL that we are we are using URL on the web. So URI are for representing the, the the data. So then I have a data, and then which is identified by this unique identifier, unique resource identifier, and other resource can point to my da data, okay? So in that way, I'm persisting the data. And the data would have five stars if the data is connected with other data on internet, okay? And this is the, the, this is the, the way in which, in, which, in, in which different administrations and governments and companies and people are providing open data on, on the web. So when we are working with the, all this type of data in different formats and so on, we cannot forget the data value chain. I mean, let's say we, we cannot take a data and then do mm, analytics on, on the data. We need to go through some kind of process in order to understand which one is the, wh where are the data and, and, and the metadata or the physical object that I want to transform into, or I want to use in my digital twin. And the data could be some, some video that is coming from st with the streaming, documents, databases, web, Excel files, database, etc. We need to prepare the data. I mean, we, we, we need to analyze if, if the data is protected if the data is curated, if the data has quality, how can I store and retrieve the data under which conditions? And because different people will provide, and organizations will provide the, 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 the data with different access policies, and uh, we will see that we have the data in heterogeneous formats. formats. Okay? So, and we need to, 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 un to understand the language, we need to understand the different de detail levels in the sense that sometimes some providers could provide with a lot of granularity, which is very, speci very specific data, other high level data. We need to understand also this context. And, and this is the main part of the process. And, and, and the more we, we iterate in these three activities, the better will be later on the task performed by the artificial intelligence programs. So when I have the data fully prepared, I, I go into modeling. And for modeling, we can use three type of uh, techniques. I forgot the, the, the last one, ontologies, machine learning, and, and the, the deep learning is not on, on the slides, but we have these three techniques. And of course, we need to evaluate the consistency, completeness, of, of the model that we have created with regards to the data. Let's say if the models represent completely the set of the data that, that I have. I deploy it and then I can make data analytics on, on, on that. So, so at least in this part of modeling, evaluation, and, and data analytics we are, we are using, and also in the integration, artificial intelligence techniques. And this is an example that was made by, by a company like more than 10 years ago where, where they integrated in the, using the, in, in the city of, 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 of London, they integrated data coming from open source uh, sources and also from closed mm -hmm. sources. So, so there you can see that, uh, that I mean, this is, this is old. I mean, this is, has many, many years. So, so we, you can see there where the, the semaphores are located, the toilets, we, we, uh, by aggregating the data coming from open sources, the average salary of, of the people in this area was calculated. Also, the unemployment rate, the crime rate, the electricity consumption. So let's say this is a step I mean, this is, this is not a digital twin, but, but let's say this is, this is a representation of, 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 of uh, on, 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 on the map of data in, from a particular city, okay? Okay, so, uh, and, and also in real time, you can see there the tweets 
and, uh, and the comments that, that people are, are providing. So here in the middle is Buckingham Palace. So you can see that, that in that case, only two, two tweets were inside the, <laughs> the palace. Okay, so, so, so let's let go. So, so, so now that we have seen that we have a lot of data in different forms and, and formats, let clarify a bit what does artificial intelligence do with the, the, the data. So, so artificial intelligence is not new. So artificial intelligence started in, in 1956 in the Dartmouth conference. And, and the goal of the artificial intelligence was to make machines clever. So remember that uh, in, in 1956, we had these big computers that the only thing that these computers made were calculation, executing mathematical formulas and working with, with numbers. And uh, at this time, the, the researchers like McCarthy, for instance, they said, okay, let's see if uh, machines can do some kind of processes that human beings can do, like identifying objects, being able of understanding the language, translating between languages, generating a uh, test, for instance, okay? So because of the new computers that we, we have, artificial intelligence is, is, is already generated in, in, in the, is already generated and, and, and we have as users artificial intelligence in our hands. And we can recognize images, we can, uh, artificial intelligence programs can understand spoken commands, generate tests, analyze tests, translate, question answering system with the ch chat GPT, making recommendation of movies, food, and so on and so forth, making predictions, simulations, and whatever thing we can, we can imagine, okay? So, so right now everything is in, 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 many, in many devices, and because of that I said before that when, when thinking on digital twins, we also need to think of the, the people, like, like physical objects that are also generating a lot of, lot of data. Artificial intelligence also is in, in integrated in more um, in 21 century devices like drones, integrated in, in devices mm, for health purposes. I suppose that all of you have already read the person that start working again after having the spinal cord injury because it was measured the, the, the brain based on the brain signals, they were able using artificial intelligence to generate the same signal and help the people to work. And uh, now we are moving into extending the, the capacity of the human being with the, with the chip. So, 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 so we can say that in this, in, this, in this line, we can see that we started the artificial intelligence by, uh, with the goal of making pe uh, machines more clever and now what we are trying to do is to, to make people even though more clever by introducing the chips into, into, into our, our brain. So this is, has a lot of physio philosophical debate and moral debate and so on and so forth. This is not the goal of this talk, okay? So what an artificial intelligence system is doing? This slide is also really, really important because at the end, any, any application that, that you will build in the, mm, in the digital twin world, it will perceive the environment. And perception of the environment is, is done through data acquisition by sensors or by cameras or by analyzing what is written in a test or by analyzing what is in a map, okay? So, 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 so we have uh, a structured data and a structured data, same structured data. With the, 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 the intelligence system has a model, okay, a model of the world. And we will see later on that we have three techniques for, for, building, for building models, okay? So with the data and the model, the system is able of reasoning, processing the information, 
and making a decision. Okay? And uh, the decision impacts the real world in the case of the drone, okay? And also in the digital world because because of whatever the machine is doing on physical need to be stored into the digital in order to have both uh, system, let's say, aligned and with the same information. And, uh, and, uh, and also we can go further and the system can also learn and adapt the, the behavior, okay? And, uh, and uh, these models are based on, on rules or on, on words, on ontologies, or they are based on numerical models. So, so, so right now, we don't have a general artificial intelligence. What we have are a specific artificial intelligence <coughs> programs and applications that are able to solve a specific task. And by aggregation of this different arti this artificial intelligence, we will be able of generating more complex programs and systems that will do more intelligent things. But artificial intelligence cannot go alone because we are also advancing at the same time that Internet of Things, uh, the next generation chips, the supercomputers, the sensors, the robotics, the cloud. Okay, so, so, so I in order to have uh, uh, the artificial intelligence already prepared and ready to be used, the, the, the we need an ecosystem of, of technologies. And, and, and we cannot apply artificial intelligence if the, 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 the if, if, if we don't have already digitalized the domain in which we want to apply the artificial intelligence. So digitalization is first, and then artificial intelligence goes after, after, after that. So in order to have and to build an, an intelligent system, we need the, the computing infrastructure, we need the data, we have seen a lot about that. We need data providers, we have seen the data providers, and the most important parts are the models and the algorithms. So, so, so right now, it seems that artificial intelligence is only the generative AI and, and uh, the GPT and the, and the foundational models. No, I mean, artificial intelligence is the techniques that allow the system to reason and explain. And for that, we have the techniques of knowledge representation and reasoning. We have <coughs> those techniques that are able to learn. And uh, we talk that the techniques related with machine learning. And also, we have the generative AI, which are based on the deep uh, learning techniques. So when, when we are talking about knowledge representation and reasoning, we, we are using words and we are using ontologies just for creating these models, and these models are based on, on logic, okay, not, not number. So when, when we are integrating the data and using ontologies, we, it, it is, you, you can think on databases, but they are really, really far more advanced than databases. So we are using, uh, we are using words and, and logic for, for reasoning. When we are using machine learning, what we are doing is using some kind of algorithms that allows us to generate numerical patterns. All of us, we are engineers and we don't need to explain what, are, what is a numerical pattern. And, and when we are using generative AI, we are using algorithms based on multiple layers of artificial neural networks. So I will go in just, just to provide some thoughts about, about that. If I'm using numerical models, the algorithms produce the formula, produce the model. And one, what is that? Can you explain what is that? No. If I say and I use words, if I use ontologies and I say that it is, the origin is a tree, it is a fruit, it is, the size is, is 10 centimeters or less, the color is red, we all know that it is a, an apple, okay? 
So, so the difference between using the machine learning or using the ontologies is that that with 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 the ontologies, which is on the, the symbolic apple, we are able to to explain what we are representing in the digital in the digital world. We can make reasoning with that. We can explain the results. <coughs> These are the pros. Which one are the cons? That we cannot build this model automatically. So this implies that they are costly, and uh, it consumes a lot of uh, human resources. But it is very good for one task, data integration and reason and explainability. And if we go into the numerical models, they use big data, they learn the patterns, the, the accuracy of the system is really high because if it is trained with a lot of data, but it, it could have some problems if the data that we are using are biased and it is very difficult for them to explain the outcomes. Why? Because I'm just executing this formula and the formula says that you are in this cluster or in the other in the other cluster. Okay? So 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 if, if you use uh, machine learning, it's it is very good, the accuracy will be it will be very high, the, the performance and the scalability too and, and if you have the data you can build very quickly, let's say, the an, an application. But but the problem is that you cannot explain. So Re, re, going into the ontologies, I, 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 if you already have taken some of the courses, you, you will see that there are some ontologies for representing uh, the, the data coming from, from sensors. In, in particular, the Semantic Sensor Network Ontology was developed by my group and, uh, and was standardized by the W3C consortium several, several years ago. And now there is another professor at Universidad Politécnica, Raúl García Castro, who is uh, uh, specializing the semantic network ontologies into the Etsy and Sarif ontologies and specializing for different verticals and creating um, uh, ontologies for agriculture, environment, energy. So, so this is an example of the Sarif for City uh, ontologies where we are providing the terminology in about different sources of information being in, in the city. Let's say for modeling the traffic, the addresses, the parking, the transport, etc. Okay? We also have another, as I said before, we also have the neural networks, which is the base of the deep learning approach. And uh, so, so, th so we have a neuron over there, the neuron has an input and it has one output, okay? So we have here different inputs of the neuron. We also have the, the arrows, and here we are going to make a calculation. The calculation is very simple. It is just multiplying the input with the weight and the sum. Very, very easy, the formula, and so, so, so the computer calculates it very easily. And we have also a function that allows us to convert the formula into one zero or one or, or one. So, so we could say if, see if, if the function is, if, if the sum is, is lower than 0 0.3, the output will be zero. If it is over 0 0.3, it will be one, okay? So I do the calculation. I say, okay, I have these inputs and I have these weights. I do the, the calculation, zero, 0, 0, 0.050, 0, 0, 0.041, 0, 0.021, 0, 0, in that case it could be 0 0.6. So the output will be 1. So this is one, one neuron. When we are talking about neural networks, we are talking about interconnected uh, neurons. So, so in that case, what we have, this blue, this point in, in blue, is one of these points in, in, in blue, okay? So, so, so then we are propagating the zeros and, and one and at the end getting the, the formula. And we are, when we are talking about deep learning, so we are going about, uh, we are talking about neural networks in, in, in different layers with very, very complex algorithms, okay? But, but at the end, again, this deep learning and machine learning are working with formula. They are not working with 
with words. So, so, so these models and, and algorithms, as I, as I said before, the, for knowledge representation and reasoning, the ontologies allows us to integrate the data, deduce new data from other data, and being able of detecting inconsistencies, inconsistencies and contradictory information in, in data. With machine learning, so, so you can use these machine learning techniques for recommending uh, content. You can also, for personalized news, let's say imagine the hospital and the digital twin of, of the hospital, doing predictive analysis, predictive maintenance, and so on and so forth. And if you go into deep learning, what we have is our, all this program that generate new images, new videos, new new test. Okay, so and it, at the end, it is called generative AI because from a lot of images, the programs generate new images. It is called generative AI because from test, the programs generate new test and translate into into in, into into other languages. And, and, and please don't forget that they are using numerical models, so probabilities. So, so, so we are not using words. So, so at some point when we are using the generative AI, we, we are losing the, the, the meaning of the original document because after a long process, everything can be transformed. And because of that, the chat GPT sometimes has the, um, many times it has some kind of hallucinations. Okay, and, uh, and uh, the hype came in 2022 and 2023, so you can go into the AI index report from Stanford and you can see there, so, so the, different, the different technologies being proposed by the big tech for writing computer programs, generating images from test, and, and so on and so forth. So let's go back into the, into the digital twins, okay? So we are collecting the data. We are adding, so think on the example. So we have something, uh, raw data, which is something which is read. We are adding to the data the context information that is a traffic light in the intersection between two famous streets, streets in, in, in Madrid in a particular date and a particular time. This is the context, the metadata. With that data, and context information, we generate models, and the models could be symbolic, let's say it could be ontologies, or it could be machine learning models or deep learning models, and from that, from the data, I could infer that the traffic light stays in red during two minutes during the last hours. And based on that, I can reason, I can make decisions, I can predict, I can say that I need to change the, the, the frequency of the same app, okay? So, so, so but, but this is the, the, the usual process. So we are always analyzing the past, which is the data that we have in order to influence the future, okay? And in order to, 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 to produce a lot of data, the European Commission is saying, okay, let's go to create the data spaces, okay? And, 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 and the, data, the data spaces, um, let's say, is, is the, the sum of the, uh, is the addition of the raw data with the context. And, and, and the knowledge spaces is the place where we are building this knowledge, these models, and creating the, the, the decision, okay? So, so, so at the end, all this data is helping and it is very important, this verb, helping humans in the decision making. It is not a matter of substituting humans for doing quicker and cheaper. It is a matter of helping people in making decisions. So, 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 so I see Raul over there. So, so, so Raul is the, the expert on, on Sarev, the ontologies of Sarev, and this, the attribution of this picture is, is to him. So, so we have the, 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 the physical, we have the physical world, 
with a lot of data coming from different sources. So you can see here the, the sensor data, the data, the documents, the personal data, don't forget the person on this. We, with the data that we have coming from the, from the, the physical objects that we are monitoring, we can complement and extend with data from the European data portal, with data from particular companies, and on top of that, we can create different views depending on what we are interested on. So if we are interested on how people move, so we can, we can create uh, views for, for see how things, or how things, m how people moved in, in, in the area or, 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 or making control of the indoor in case of COVID. And with the AI models, so we can build the applications that exploit the, the, the data, okay? Okay, so let's go into the third part, and I finish in, in a few minutes. So, so, so we have the regulation, what can we do with the data? So it depends on where we have the, the, the data. So we know that China, the United States, and the European Commission behaves and have legislation in, 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 different, in different ways. The point is that as far as we advance in the digitalization, any time we have more users, more data, we are looking for more efficiency. We have more addiction because we have more applications that we use for forever, and, and we sh should have some cautions because sometimes we should think about where, where are the legal limits, economic, social, politics, privacy, security, cybersecurity, energy consumption, and so on and, and so forth. So the European Commission started with the regulation, with the General Data Protection Regulation. Now we, we have the AU AI Act, which is the, the first regulation on artificial intelligence. A few months ago, uh, President Biden already provided the executive order on safe, secure, and trustworthy artificial intelligence. And in November, we also have the Bletchley Declaration of, of Countries, okay? So, so these are documents to to, to read before applying artificial intelligence. So regarding the AIAT, which is the, the one being promoted by Euro the European Commission, the aim is to benefit people and society. In order, uh, the, 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 the goal is that AI should be robust, to provide legal security, to promote a single market, should be fair, and should be able to explain why a particular decision was, was taken. Important is that, that this corpus of, or this law is based on, on previous laws, like the GDPR, the intellectual property rights, some laws re regarding with the reuse or sharing of, of data, and, uh, and the legislation is risk-oriented. So there are some applications that will be unacceptable with well, an acceptable risk, which is everything related with facial recognition, so, so we cannot be uh, just walking on the school or in the Plaza de España or in the Retiro Park and, and then being annotated, so as soon as going over there, no. no. So, so this is forbidden in the, in, the European, in the European law, unless there is a, a judge that says that, that, that a program, an artificial intelligence program should be run on a particular date, on a particular uh, segment, okay? We also have the, the it, it, it will be unacceptable, the social scoring, like we have in, like the Chinese people have, okay? That say you are a good citizen or bad citizens because you do this or, 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 or that. There are other kind of application of high risk, um, which are related with medical diagnosis, autonomous car, law enforcement, and so on and so forth, and this application should have and should keep the, the, the properties end to end. I mean, from, from, from the day, the, I mean, the, the, they are put in operation until the day they are re retired from, from, from the market. We have level three, which are applications with limited risk, which are applications that allow us, that allow uh, to recognize uh, emotions or, or um, uh, applications that uh, generate the fakes, chatbots, and, uh, and finally we, we have other applications that are of minimal risk 
which are applications that, that uh, allows to, to predict failures, for instance, in, in machines. So the message is to take home is that please build on top of standards. W3C and Etsy already have a lot of ontologies for allow you to represent the, the data. Artificial intelligence can help in many different ways in reasoning and explanation, making decisions, predictions, simulations, and, and learning. Data interoperability goes beyond the technical layer. Don't forget the citizens that are also generating a lot of data and, 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 and please, at the end, be compliant with the, with the legislation. So, so thank you so much for, for, for your attention. Nacho, no sé si hay preguntas o no. Thank you, Asuncion, uh, for, for your lecture. Very interesting. Uh, I, I have maybe a naive question about to uh, talk about uh, data and uh, connections. And, um, and standards. And uh, my next question is about um, what is a private uh, provider of software or sensor? Um, do they lobby a lot to push their own uh, definition of standards? And how can uh, socially, the, the together, we can like agree uh, on uh, which standard to use when you have different companies, private companies, pushing for the solution because they want to, they don't want to remake what they've yeah. done, actually. I mean, in, in, in the case of, of, of sensors, I mean, the, we, in particular, Raul uh, was working with the sensor network ontologies, and it took, like, three years to, to go into the standardization process, I mean, to reach con uh, agreement between the coming from the academia and also with can companies to, to reach to reach consensus, and but this is one of them. W3C they provide vocabularies for representing the, the data <coughs> and also languages for 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 writing down the the, the data. Uh, and of course, the in Europe, the Etsy should be one of the the ontologies in that case to to be reused. It is not simple to, to, to reach this kind of consensus, and, and uh, we need this kind of standardization bodies. And from the academia perspective, uh, this is a big job because, because you, you, you spend like two years, three years just pushing a standardization, and, uh, and at the end, this doesn't provide many papers. Yeah. But at the end, you have the, the, the standard, and uh, in, in, in the case on, of our group, so we we people know that if they want interoperability and and data integration at the, at the end the ontology engineering group will provide the the solution thank you thank you any other question so thank you oh hello uh, good morning uh I'm not a student, sorry. Uh, uh, I work in the VDTA, and uh, we have developed some privacy metrics uh, regarding uh, building uh, stuff in the digital twins. What is the importance of privacy in all the, this landscape of uh, artificial intelligence? That is my question. So privacy. Privacy, yeah. Okay. So, so let's say the i mean all of us we are forced to use the and to follow and complain with the with the with the gdpr the the, the approach that we are taking on 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 research is to use another standard from the w3c consortium which is odrl which is open digital right language odrl that allows to represent the the policies, and allows to represent in, in, in a digital way, in, 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 in the sense that a machine, just by analyzing the policies that you have put on a particular data, can know if you can use or you can no, not use, and under which condition this particular data. So, so 
So, so, so let's say we, we, we should think that the data are not co to be consumed just by our own organization or through the web page. We need to think further and to see that the data from my company or from my application could be called or demanded by another application or by another company. And, and for doing that, I need to represent in a, mach in a machine processable way the access condition to the data. And, and access condition implies privacy and also the licenses of, of use if the data is not related with, with privacy. So in that case, o ODRL allows to represent both things. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I just wanted to to ask if you have, if you could share with us some thoughts about uh, the impact in sustainability that you mentioned there. Yeah. There are concerns, if you could. Uh, yeah, the the I, I had one slide, but at the end I I, I remove it. So 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 we should think on on, on several things. The, the 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 first one is that. It, um, it is required a lot of energy in building these powerful machines. The second point is that artificial intelligence and digitalization needs data. This data needs to be stored. So this is also energy consumption. If we are using ontologies, the energy consumption of the process is not too high. It's almost nothing, okay, normal. But if you, we are using uh, machine learning, and in particular, deep neural networks, the, for building, for instance, the foundational models, the energy consumption is extremely high. So the, the, this index from, from Stanford correlates the, the number of parameters that a large language model has with the, the, the energy consumption being mm, taken. Okay, and, uh, and we shouldn't forget that all these machines need to be in a cold environment. So there is also the energy consumption associated to, to that. That could be related either with the el electricity and, and also with the, the water, if, if it is used water for, for, for that. There is some, some studies from uh, ACM the first paper was published in 2020, and the name is Green AI. I don't remember the names of the, the, the authors, but if you look Green AI, ACM, you get the paper. And it was like like building one of these models, the, 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 the CO2 fingerprint was like traveling uh, like 32 times from, from New York and, and, and Tokyo, going for one hour, okay? Thank you very much, Asun. Uh, we have gone beyond our time, but uh, it was so interesting that I didn't want to, 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 to interrupt it. Thank you very much.